Um, I can talk for hours about this girl can, so I'm not going to do that now or I'll get told off, but I'm going to try and very quickly take you through where the, cam where the campaign came from, but more importantly, what we've been focusing on in the last few months and where we're going as well. But if there's any questions, then we've got Q&A at the end or you can grab me later on this afternoon or this evening. This Girl Can is run by Sport England, government organisation um, in England, uh, focused on grassroots sport and physical activity. I've been there for nearly 16 years now, and for many years we were quite a traditional organisation, funding a lot of the sports club, a lot of the sports activities that our sector has traditionally done. A few, uh, four years ago, three, four years ago, we had a new strategy and a new vision where we really wanted to reach out and make sure that everyone in England, regardless of their age, background or ability, felt able to take part in sport and physical activity, and also a sector that really understood their needs and knew how to reshape itself to meet their needs. We knew that this was important because across all, um, all the different groups, all the different demographics, there were some real um, gaps in activity, and the one that we were concerned with this girl can was a gender gap in male female participation that at its highest uh, was 2 million but just before we launched in January 14 was 1.75 million and as I said this morning that's despite all the activity that we'd been doing in the previous years to try and create opportunities for women and girls to get active and it really didn't understand it because we were giving them opportunities which they told us what their needs were, and these met their needs, but they still weren't doing it, yet they said they wanted to do it. But despite our work, despite the fact that they knew, everybody knows about getting active in the same way that we know about alcohol units, nicotine, calories, everything else. We all know what our bodies need um, and what they don't need. doesn't mean we do anything about it. So the health and fitness industry messaging wasn't getting through, and even the London, uh, London 2012 Olympics and Paralympics, that was throughout that 10-year period as well, the build-up to that and the Games themselves. A lot of attention on physical activity in the UK as part of that, still not closing the gender gap. And we really needed to understand why. So we went back to our insight, went back to our audience to ask them. And they told us lots of things that really got beyond those practical barriers around childcare or time or not the right sort of classes. And it was all sorts of emotional things about wearing tight clothing or not wanting or feeling able to or being culturally allowed to show their body, holding everyone up, um, not looking made up and that sort of image of a perfect female that we brought up to believe that women are supposed to look like, feeling silly, um, even being too good as well, that could be a barrier. Amongst the girls and women who'd maybe enjoyed sport and PE at school, it didn't necessarily fit in with how they saw themselves in adult life and they didn't feel able to go out there and were worried about being seen as too competitive. Lots and lots and lots of things which we could loop all together and thread all together in what was a real fear of judgment. And that was judgment of others, but also judgment of ourselves. And I think, as in many cases, it's that judgment of ourselves that goes on up here that can be the most crippling and can really hold us back from all sorts of things that we wanted to do. So we knew we needed to do something different, and it couldn't be a traditional communications campaign, an average government campaign with lots of idealised, slightly unrealistic images of people being excited about plates of salad. I like salad, but I don't get that excited about it. It needed to be something that really cut through all that messaging and really connected. And thinking about that, we thought about all those that fear of judgment and that thread and really managed to look at it from three different angles because we couldn't tackle each one of those things individually. There was a whole set of fears around appearance, both in what women are supposed to look like, uh, not becoming too red-faced, sweaty, muscly, sort of being active isn't seen as particularly, or wasn't seen as particularly feminine way of looking, but also the way women were traditionally portrayed in sport, uh, fitness marketing or weight loss marketing or in fashion. So this picture on the right is the model Cara Delevingne uh, in active wear for Puma, but wearing the sort of active wear that I don't think you could particularly go running in. Um, certainly I would look as worried as she seems to look there if I was going running in those pants. But it was things that women couldn't really relate to, didn't connect with, and didn't feel that physical activity was for women like them because they just didn't see themselves. And it's a marketing cliche, but it's true, you can't be what you can't see. A whole section of things around ability. One woman said to me that she was too fat to get fit, which is really quite heartbreaking actually when you start to really unpick that and think about how she's got to that state. The experience of PE at school, and I know in the, in the children track they'll be talking about this, but obviously 
uh, the way PE and sport is delivered at school has a huge impact, not just when we're children, but those feelings, if you weren't good at it, and I was one of those who's terrible at it, stays with you for life. And if you mention team sports to me now, you'll see me run, but not in a constructive way on the pitch. I'll run in the opposite direction. It really puts women off if they have a bad experience, and that stays with them for life. And you can't just dismiss that feeling and say, oh, it doesn't matter, because it's a real visceral emotion. And again, as I said, even the women who were good with that, because we have so many stereotypes around what it is to be sporty and active women, if they didn't recognise themselves as that, that would put them off taking part as well. And finally, around priorities, particularly mothers with young children felt guilty about spending time away from their families, but also guilty that they weren't being good role models. And we've done further research since into mothers and uh, children, and we know that children of active mothers are more likely to grow up to be active themselves. So while my focus is on encouraging women to be active for their sake, there is also a real role here, and if we can get mothers to be more active, that will help fix problems in the future as well. We knew that many women thought they were alone. They didn't think that other women were feeling like this. Um, it wasn't anything they particularly talked about, and they probably felt too silly to talk about it. So really, we're plowing a lonely path. And the aspirational imagery that you would normally see just wasn't proving aspirational. In fact, it was actually putting women off. It was absolutely, that's for those sort of women, I'm not one of those, or I'll think about it tomorrow, but it's not a necessity today. We also knew that not everyone wants to go out there and win. Um, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing, according to Vince Lombardi, but a lot of us don't give a monkey's about competition, and that feeling that there's no part in taking part, no point in taking part in sport unless you're going to getting personal bests, winning, pushing yourself, getting the gold medal, lifting the cup. If that's what motivates you, that's fantastic, and lots of women are brilliant at sport, and we've seen some fantastic female uh, sportswomen um, and sports athletes in the UK, certainly over the last few years. Doesn't, ma doesn't motivate everyone, and for too much of sports marketing, that is the absolute focus of it, and it's all about that no pain, no gain. It's got to hurt until you win. Wasn't working for our women. So we knew there was a real comms role here, and this is where the campaign came from. We wanted to liberate women from that fear of judgment that were really holding them back. We wanted to create assets that not just what England could use, because we know that we can't solve this on our own. We needed partners to be able to work with it. We needed um, they to create assets, tools, imagery, hashtags that people could use. It had to be short and positive. We wanted it to be a celebration. We're not telling women off for not getting active. We're encouraging them to feel they can and then celebrating when they do. And it had to be used every day. So what we didn't tell and what we don't tell are these sort of triumph over tragedy, big epic stories, or talk about people doing ultra marathons, all these incredible sporting endeavours. Again, very inspiring, but aren't the everyday stuff. What we wanted to hear about was women who were fitting it into their normal everyday lives. We wanted to create a new aspiration, which was not one based on a physical ideal, that whole thing about you have to lose weight and to get a bikini body, quickest way to get a bikini body is just buy a bikini and put it on. It's not about a physical ideal, it's not about weight loss, it's not about toning up, it's about having a mental confidence that allows you to feel that you can go and get active and there'll be days when you feel like doing it, there may be days when you don't and that's fine too, but it's knowing up here that you can and that you belong there as well. So this is the manifesto that really sits at the heart of all our work. Women come in all shapes and sizes, all levels of ability. It doesn't matter if we're rubbish or expert. The point is we're women and we're doing something. And that is all that matters. And actually we do need to add into that and we have more consciously added into that. It's all shapes, shapes sizes and backgrounds. Celebration of active women everywhere. We use real women, everyday women in the campaign. So we found them in parks, leisure centres, jumping into the Mersey in the north of England here. Um, they swim all year round, not in wetsuits, so that is pretty tough and hardcore. Um, but using them uh, and encouraging them and having pictures of them doing the sort of activities that they normally do, so there's nothing fake or pretend about any of this. No retouching of photography, so no photoshopping. Women look fabulous where we are. We don't need people to be playing around with pixels to uh, get rid of any blemishes or cellulite. But all showing women who, had, who understood these judgments, may have felt them themselves, but had found their way through it and had a real don't give a damn attitude and created um, photography that I still find quite moving and beautiful. So this was Sam, who we found when she'd just done her second park run, if you've got those um, in your countries. Um, and she, not a very fast runner, not a very experienced one, but included her in the campaign and really celebrated the fact that yeah, she's not a size six model, she's not teeny tiny. She talked about being happy and proud to show off her cellulite. Um, and she talked about how important it was for her daughter, who was a teenager at the time, to see her doing that as well, because she didn't want another generation of girls to grow up thinking that you're only acceptable if you look a certain way. 
celebrating that getting active is about loving our bodies, not because we've done something wrong. So many women talked about going to the gym and going on the treadmill or punishing themselves and it feeling like a negative experience, which is not necessarily the gym's fault, um, but it's the way that sometimes they feel about it and feeling like it's something they had to do uh, to punish themselves, not because they could just celebrate that glorious feeling of movement that I think swimming pretty much more than anything certainly gives me. And you don't have to be fast and you don't have to be pushing and you don't have to look like you're training for the Tour de France. It's fine just to be get out there. And for everyone, and this happens to so many women who get sh go out on a bike or go running who get shouted at by, by men um, and being told to move a bit faster, love, or whatever it is, it's, you know, you're still going faster than them. And celebrating the sweat and the red faces. Um, and every drop of sweat you see in our campaign is genuinely earned. So these poor women who we invited to be part of the campaign, invited them down to a photo shoot, probably thought it was going to be glamorous. We made them work for half an hour or an hour before they actually got to uh, the bit where we shot them. And merely making sure it was inclusive as well, um, in a way that uh, was inviting more women in rather than drawing attention to what made them different. And this was our first ad, which I will skip through in the interest of time. gives you a flavour. Sorry, I'm really conscious of time. Um, so that was sort of the creative approach, but it was not just about creating, um, I think is beautiful creative material, it's also the conversations that you had. So using social media, that's been a really important part of the campaign, of having conversations with women, not talking at them, not telling them off. So for example, Stickatoria on the left here talked about how she wanted to go to the gym, but ended up in Costa Coffee. So just sort of empathising and being related find relating to that and being a warm supportive friend not someone telling her off for not doing it and we use social media listening tools to find the conversations of women who were um getting act who were on the cusp of getting active but not quite there involving the audience so we created a tool that allowed them to put themselves into the campaign so they could visualize themselves in it and celebrate their own activity and share that and it worked so 2.8 million women getting more active as a result of this girl can, and half of those were coming back into activity after a long break or starting it for the first time since school. But that's not enough. Um, activity is up in the UK. We just had figures released today. That's fantastic, but we're not reaching all people, and we're certainly not reaching all women. So we want to make sure that women on lower incomes, women from ethnic minority backgrounds, um, and teenagers are also getting active. We've gone back to research, we've gone back to data to really make sure that we understand more about the real lives of the women who we're trying to reach through this phase of the campaign um, and really understanding um, how stereotyped and patronised women on lower incomes often feel by traditional media, traditional marketing, certainly in the UK, um, and often see it as a metropolitan London-based elite um, who don't really understand and can often talk down to them. A real lack of heroes or role models they felt was in there, they didn't see themselves represented. And there was a feeling like they were constantly failing. We did similar research also with the BAME groups, minority ethnic groups we were talking to, and also teenagers. But a lot of it came down to this feeling that life, their life and their choices weren't respected, and they were portrayed as if life happened to them rather than things that they'd actively chosen to go out and do. And we asked them what stops them getting more active, which is probably the most important slide, actually. Uh, most women have really busy lives, and they're doing this, that, and the other. Children telling them they need to lift here, they need to lift there. Yeah. There's so, yeah, always something you've got to sacrifice to be able to do anything else. Getting there, you just think, I know, I'll be tomorrow, I'll be tomorrow, or oh, I need to do the washing instead. Mm. There's always like stuff. Time, no time to go to, to do exercise or to go to gym. Or they were talking about practical barriers, but their body language and their tone of voice and everything, it was a real emotional response to it. So yes, time is an issue, cost was is an issue. Um, but just the way they didn't feel like they were able to do anything about that. And so it was a mix of practical emotional coming together and a lot of guilt and feelings of inadequacy mixed in. We also asked what they thought of the word exercise. And I'll slip to the summary side on this. For a lot of them, becoming sufficiently active um, was a really daunting prospect, whether they were inactive, so less than 30 minutes, or fairly active, somewhere between that 30 and 150 minutes. I just don't have an extra hour in my day. And I think, you know, picking up on some of the themes that are coming through today, that idea of having activity built throughout your day, all those minutes that you can add in where you can just add activity and be active, was something that they just didn't recognise as being part of an active lifestyle. It had to be going somewhere, doing a thing for a set, quite chunky period of time, and it just felt impossible. And it didn't feel legitimate to be doing anything else. Conventional exercise was merely making activity feel unattainable to them and it was making them feel inadequate just something else to fail at so if you're going to fail why even bother starting 
So this is our sort of modernised proposition from this, is forget convention, forget convention, it all counts. Really celebrating the women who are getting out there, doing it, getting active in the way that's right for them. I'm speeding up because I can see the clock counting down. So our current creative really tries to celebrate that. This is Debbie who goes uh, fitness trampolining because it's her hour of freedom a week. She's got um, a disabled daughter with long-term needs and this is time just to take out for herself. It's just about feeling free. It's not about doing beautiful backflips. It's just about time for herself. Ella uses a hula hoop to exercise at home that she got in the charity shop. It's a weighted hula hoop and she does it for 20 minutes a day and gets a real sweat on and will be strengthening as well, I think, with that too. And Nikki, who was 12 weeks pregnant when we did the shoot, um, and she was teaching herself to swim with YouTube videos, not at the same time, um, but looking at them getting in the water because she wanted to be able to swim with her son when he was born which she's now doing. Gabriel's now three months old, I think. Um, and she couldn't afford swimming lessons. So it was very real, it was very normal, it was very everyday. It was finding the women who had found their own way through the sector. <laughs> Don't have time for... Uh, sorry, that's a bit of a tease. Barbara Streisand was great. It's not them, it's us. This has been about behaviour change for women. It's also behaviour change for the sector. And I think we'll probably pick this up in Q&A. But if we don't change, if we don't change the way that we are creating, promoting, shaping sport and activity, then there will be groups of people who we never meet. And that's probably the biggest thing we've learned. Thank you. It's really